The first sign that there was something inside Dalton's billiard ball, Adam, emerged in 1869 with Mendeleev's periodic table. Dalton suggested that each element was unique, but Mendeleev showed that their uniqueness varied periodically. The best way to explain the patterns in the periodic table was to assume that some kind of structure inside the atom governed the chemical and physical properties of elements. A clue to this structure came from the study of electricity. In 1800, the invention of the battery showed that chemical reactions could produce an electric current. A short time later, the discovery that electricity could decompose water into oxygen and hydrogen made it clear that chemistry and electricity were somehow related. But it wasn't until the 1870s that the electrical nature of the atom was discovered with this device, the cathode ray tube, sometimes called the Crookes tube after its inventor, William Crookes. Most of the air has been removed from this tube. The negative electrode is called a cathode, and the positive electrode is called an anode. When an electric current is applied, the low-pressure gas conducts electricity, producing a glow. This glow was thought to be a form of electromagnetic radiation, like light. But when the tube was positioned in a magnetic field, something strange happened. The beam was deflected. Light is not affected by magnetic fields, but moving charged particles can be deflected. What can you conclude about the nature of the beam? Crookes realized that the beam is not light. He assumed it was made of charged particles. Charged objects are attracted by objects carrying an opposite charge and repelled by objects with the same charge. The beam flowed from the negatively charged cathode to the positively charged anode. What was the charge of the beam? Crookes concluded that the beam of particles was negatively charged and it became known as a cathode ray. J.J. Thompson, an English physicist, set out to understand these strange beams of particles. Thompson confirmed that the beam was made of negatively charged particles by bending the beam with an electric field. He passed a current through different gases, and the beam was always deflected by the same amount for a magnetic or electric field with the same strength. He tried cathodes made of different metals, but the results were still the same. Through repeated experiments, Thompson showed that the behavior of the negatively charged particles was independent of the elements present in the cathodes, glass, or gases. What can you conclude from this? Thompson concluded that he always got the same results because these charged subatomic particles, now called electrons, are universal constituents of all atoms. Cathode rays are really electrons that have been pulled away from their atoms and flung from the cathode to the anode by electrical forces. Thompson's work indicated that atoms contain negatively charged components. But most matter does not carry an electric charge. It is neutral. How is the negative charge of the electrons balanced? In order to balance the negative charge of the electrons, Thompson realized that the atom must also contain a positively charged component. Thompson was able to detect a positively charged beam by passing electric current through hydrogen gas. We now know he had found the positively charged particles we call protons.
Thomson proposed a new model in which the atom is comprised of negatively charged particles within a positively charged area. He described the atom as a sphere of positive charge with enough negative electrons mixed in to balance the positive charge, making the total charge zero. It's kind of like a piece of watermelon with seeds scattered throughout. How does Thompson's model differ from Dalton's model? Thompson's experiments shattered Dalton's indivisible spheres by revealing a universal component of all atoms. Thompson was the first scientist to propose a model of the inner structure of the atom and to describe the electrical nature of matter. 